Tales of a Wayside Inn by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow The Theologian's Tale Torquemada In the heroic days when Ferdinand and Isabella ruled the Spanish land, and Torquemada, with his subtle brain, ruled them as Grand Inquisitor of Spain, in a great castle near Valladolid, moated and high and by fair woodlands hid, there dwelt, as from the chronicles we learn, an old Hidalgo, proud and taciturn, whose name has perished with his towers of stone and all his actions save this one alone. This one, so terrible perhaps, to best if it too were forgotten with the rest, unless perchance our eyes can see therein the martyrdom triumphant o'er the sin a double picture with its gloom and glow the splendour overhead the death below this sombre man counted each day as lost on which his feet no sacred threshold crossed and when he chanced the passing host to meet he knelt and prayed devoutly in the street oft he confessed and with each mutinous thought as with wild beasts at ephesus he fought in deep contrition scourged himself in lent walked in processions with his head down bent at plays of corpus christi oft was seen and on palm sunday bore his bough of green his only pastime was to hunt the boar through tangled thickets of the forest hoar or with his jingling mules to hurry down to some grand bullfight in the neighbouring town or in the crowd with lighted taper stand when jews were burned or banished from the land then stirred within him a tumultuous joy the demon whose delight it is to destroy shook him and shouted with a trumpet tone kill kill and let the lord find out his own and now in that old castle in the wood his daughters in the dawn of womanhood returning from their convent school had made resplendent with their bloom the forest shade reminding him of their dead mother's face when first she came into that gloomy place a memory in his heart as dim and sweet as moonlight in a solitary street where the same rays that lift the sea are thrown lovely but powerless upon walls of stone these two fair daughters of a mother dead were all the dream had left him as it fled a joy at first and then a growing care as if a voice within him cried beware a vague presentiment of impending doom like ghostly footsteps in a vacant room haunted him day and night a formless fear that death to some one of his house was near with dark surmises of a hidden crime made life itself a death before its time jealous suspicious with no sense of shame a spy upon his daughters he became with velvet slippers noiseless on the floors he glided softly through half-open doors now in the room and now upon the stair he stood beside them ere they were aware he listened in the passage when they talked he watched them from the casement when they walked he saw the gypsy haunt the river's side he saw the monk among the cork trees glide and tortured by the mystery and the doubt of some dark secret past his finding out baffled he paused then reassured again pursued the flying phantom of his brain he watched them even when they knelt in church and then descending lower in his search questioned the servants and with eager eyes listened incredulous to their replies the gypsy none had seen her in the wood the monk a mendicant in search of food at length the awful revelation came crushing at once his pride of birth and name the hopes his yearning bosom forward cast and the ancestral glories of the past all fell together crumbling in disgrace a turret rent from battlement to base his daughters talking in the dead of night in their own chamber and without a light listening as he was wont he overheard and learned the dreadful secret 
word by word and hurrying from his castle with a cry he raised his hands to the unpitying sky repeating one dread word till bush and tree caught it and shuddering answered heresy wrapped in his cloak his hat drawn o'er his face now hurrying forward now with lingering pace he walked all night the alleys of his park with one unseen companion in the dark the demon who within him lay in wait and by his presence turned his love to hate forever muttering in an undertone kill kill and let the lord find out his own upon the morrow after early mass while yet the dew was glistening on the grass and all the woods were musical with birds the old hidalgo uttering fearful words walked homeward with the priest and in his room summoned his trembling daughters to their doom when questioned with brief answers they replied nor when accused evaded or denied expostulations passionate appeals all that the human heart most fears or feels in vain the priest with earnest voice essayed in vain the father threatened wept and prayed until at last he said with haughty mien the holy offices then must intervene and now the grand inquisitor of spain with all the fifty horsemen of his train his awful name resounding like the blast of funeral trumpets as he onward passed came to valladolid and there began to harry the rich jews with fire and ban to him the hidalgo went and at the gate demanded audience on affairs of state and in a secret chamber stood before a venerable grey-beard of fourscore dressed in the hood and habit of a friar out of his eyes flashed a consuming fire and in his hand the mystic horn he held which poison and all noxious charms dispelled he heard in silence the hidalgo's tale then answered in a voice that made him quail son of the church when abraham of old to sacrifice his only son was told he did not pause to parley nor protest but hastened to obey the lord's behest in him it was accounted righteousness the holy church expects of thee no less a sacred frenzy seized the father's brain and mercy from that hour implored in vain ah who will e'er believe the words i say his daughters he accused and the same day they both were cast into the dungeon's gloom that dismal antechamber of the tomb arraigned condemned and sentenced to the flame the secret torture and the public shame then to the grand inquisitor once more the hidalgo went more eager than before and said when abraham offered up his son he clave the wood wherewith it might be done by his example taught let me too bring wood from the forest for my offering and the deep voice without a pause replied son of the church by faith now justified complete thy sacrifice even as thou wilt the church absolves thy conscience from all guilt then this most wretched father went his way into the woods that round his castle lay where once his daughters in their childhood played with their young mother in the sun and shade now all the leaves had fallen the branches bare made a perpetual moaning in the air and screaming from their eyries overhead the ravens sailed athwart the sky of lead with his own hands he lopped the boughs and bound faggots that crackled with foreboding sound and on his mules caparisoned and gay with bells and tassels sent them on their way then with his mind on one dark purpose bent again to the inquisitor he went and said behold the faggots i have brought and now lest my atonement be as naught grant me one more request one last desire with my own hand to light the funeral fire and torquemada answered from his seat son of the church thine offering is complete her servants through all ages shall not cease to magnify thy deed depart in peace upon the market-place 
builded of stone the scaffold rose whereon death claimed his own at the four corners in stern attitude four statues of the hebrew prophets stood gazing with calm indifference in their eyes upon this place of human sacrifice round which was gathered fast the eager crowd with clamour of voices dissonant and loud and every roof and window was alive with restless gazers swarming like a hive the church bells tolled the chant of monks drew near loud trumpets stammered forth their notes of fear a line of torches smoked along the street there was a stir a rush a tramp of feet and with its banners floating in the air slowly the long procession crossed the square and to the statues of the prophet bound the victims stood with faggots piled around then all the air a blast of trumpets shook and louder sang the monks with bell and book and the hidalgo lofty stern and proud lifted his torch and bursting through the crowd lighted in haste the faggots and then fled lest those imploring eyes should strike him dead o oh, pitiless skies why did your clouds retain for peasants fields their floods of hoarded rain o oh, pitiless earth why opened no abyss to bury in its chasm a crime like this that night a mingled column of fire and smoke from the dark thickets of the forest broke and glaring o'er the landscape leagues away made all the fields and hamlets bright as day wrapped in a sheet of flame the castle blazed and as the villagers in terror gazed they saw the figure of that cruel knight lean from a window in the turret's height his ghastly face illumined with the glare his hands upraised above his head in prayer till the floor sank beneath him and he fell down the black hollow of that burning well. Three centuries and more above his bones have piled the oblivious years like funeral stones. His name has perished with him, and no trace remains on earth of his afflicted race. But Torquemada's name, with clouds o'ercast, looms in the distant landscape of the past, like a burnt tower upon a blackened heath lit by the fires of burning woods beneath interlude thus closed the tale of guilt and gloom that cast upon each listener's face its shadow and for some brief space unbroken silence filled the room the jew was thoughtful and distressed upon his memory thronged and pressed the persecution of his race their wrongs and sufferings and disgrace his head was sunk upon his breast and from his eyes alternate came flashes of wrath and tears of shame the student first the silence broke as one who long has lain in wait with purpose to retaliate and thus he dealt the avenging stroke in such a company as this a tale so tragic seems amiss that by its terrible control o'er masters and drags down the soul into a fathomless abyss the italian tales that you disdain some merry knight of straparol or machiavelli's belfagor would cheer us and delight us more give greater pleasure and less pain than your grim tragedies of spain and here the poet raised his hand with such entreaty and command it stopped discussion at its birth and said the story i shall tell has meaning in it if not mirth listen and hear what once befell the merry birds of killingworth <laughs> 